Go, go, gadget. Click off the video as soon as you hear my horrible voice. Inspect your gadget. I mean, what do you want me to say? Probably nothing can get to the review, right? Join the fucking club. It was quite possibly Deke Entertainment's most successful TV show and pretty much became Deke's mascot. The show started in 1983 featuring Don Adams from Get Smart, a show that was about a bumbling agent that somehow completes missions. And that's Gadget to a T. He gets into shit, shit happens, but somehow shit gets done, thanks to his niece Penny and her dog Brain, who do most of the heavy lifting behind the scenes. Deke was very proud of Gadget, giving him TV specials, spinoffs, movies, and animated movies. In fact, he's even appeared on the Super Mario Super Show twice, once on the short Defective Gadgetry, and again in The Treasure of Sierra Brooklyn, both times played by Maurice LaMarche, who later replaced Don Adams after he retired in 1999. Needless to say, it was a pretty popular IP, so of course it had to have video games. How do you not be a successful TV show and not have a single video game? The Raccoon? And with that said, y'all get ready to lay down some brown bricks because it's time to play Inspector Gadget games. Technically, the first Gadget game was Inspector Gadget Circus of Fear on the ugh, Commodore 64, made by Beam Software, which as I said in the Tom and Jerry review, was famous for making literal shit on a stick. Apparently, there's two versions of this game. One we didn't get, and this is the version we did get. And I can tell you right now, the version we got is ruptured hemorrhoids. The first thing I noticed immediately is you can't move straight up and down. You have to move up and down diagonally. So when you go up, you always go up and right. When you go down, you go down and left. Why the fuck would you program it like that? I mean, seriously, what was their reasoning? Oh, the game isn't bullshit enough. Better fuck up the controls. Whoever programmed this game must have went on to work for Apple. From what I can tell, you're supposed to find your gadgets by searching all over the stage, but they're not in plain sight. No, that would be too easy. You have to bump up against everything and use the look function. So you press the fire button to look, right? No! You press fire and down at the same time. It specifically wants fire and down at the same exact precise time. Not one button and then the other. Only then will you look. And if it didn't find anything, you get no notification, no nothing. If you do, then an item appears on the bottom, which as far as I know, you can't use. The menu will let you select it, but I have pressed all four directions and the fire button and nothing happens. So we have a gadget game where you can't even use his gadgets. Great fucking game. 10-10 would take this game home and let it skull fuck me in the eye socket. Absolute Commodore 64 classic right here. I swear the people who say that the Commodore 64 is an iconic game system have Stockholm Syndrome. That's all they grew up with so they didn't know anything better than that. Let's play something else before I have an aneurysm. This next one is called Inspector Gadget Global Terror on MS-DOS and the intro sounds like this. Have you ever heard music that sounded drunk? Oh, 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 oh. Right away, Chief. Don't get your hopes up. There's only three sound effects in this whole game. Oh, oh boy, it's a point and click. Scrape my balls with a cheese grater. I hate me some point and clicks. The good news is this is not that awful, honestly. It's extremely linear. You never have to backtrack. And it damn near explains every puzzle for you. No, really, you can call Chief Quimby and he'll literally tell you how to solve the puzzle. It's pretty obvious this is a Babby game. It does follow the show pretty damn well, though. It's like you're in an episode of the show. The story is Dr. Claw captured members of the United Nations and Gadget has to save them. And just like the show, Brain uses disguises to get past mad agents, Penny gets kidnapped and uses her computer book to escape, and Gadget remains oblivious to everything going on around him. And is apparently a male Karen? So for a point-and-click game, this one offends me the least. There's some pretty interesting scenes in this game. Like, there's this one scene where there's a United Nations guy you gotta save, but he's brainwashed by Dr. Claw. Go, go, Gadget, coat! He snaps out of it, and the mad agent tries to grab him, but this happens. Now we know why the elephant wouldn't eat that stuff. He was waiting for a nut. <laughs> Looks like he finally got one. A mad nut! <laughs> Even Gadget knows it's funny. Da mad nut! 
That alone made this game worth playing. You won't find Adobe here in Nairobi. Let me tell you something, this geographical map was made at a weird time. Instead of Russia, it says Commonwealth of Independent States. I had to look that up. I thought this meant that Moscow identifies as Russian. And Hong Kong used to be owned by the UK? I didn't know that, and I don't care. Excuse me, sir, can I touch your monkey? I promise I won't blay it in the butt. Oh, bad touch, monkey, bad touch. Piece of shit, dog. You just sat there and watched that happen. I hope you get canine COVID. You know, Scrappy Doo wouldn't have let that happen. Checkmate, Scrappy haters. Next, we've got Inspector Gadget Safety Patrol also on do- Us? What is this? Oh, it's one of those coloring book games. Gadget, you stupid fuck. Holy fuck. What in the hell possessed you to put iron crosses on your wall? That is so tacky. Why is there smoke coming out of your oven, brain? Oh, oh, I, I don't like that at all. Go, go, Gadget, cock. This is my favorite one. Remember, kids, if drugs don't give you brain damage, Inspector Gadget will. Die, you goddamn son of a bitch. No, Gadget, don't do it. Go, go, Gadget, suicide. That's enough of this. This barely counts as a game. Now there are the real meat and taters of this review. And Inspector Gadget on Super Nintendo. Two words, kill me. I cannot describe the roller coaster of emotions I went through playing this pitiful garbage excuse for a Super Nintendo game. I ran out of air. Have you ever eaten a cake that was expired? You look at the cake and it seems fine. And at first bite or so, it's not that bad. But then that third bite hits you with a taste that you immediately recognize as something wrong. You spit it back out and bear witness to the mushroom kingdom hiding inside this decaying foodstuff and no matter how many times you wash your mouth out, you never really forget the texture. And that's the story of why I can't eat cake anymore. Gadget on Super Nintendo is an expired cake. At first I noticed how you have all these gadgets you can use to get to new areas and the stage seems easy enough so I start thinking, hell, this might be good. And then I bit into the green shit. <laughs> The first problem is you can only take two hits, just like ghosts and goblins, and you even lose your clothes on the first hit. And a lot of the enemies take a hell of a lot of hits. And there's some areas in the game I swear the game is trolling you. Stop, stop, we already did that one. Guys, I can't relay to you how much I hate this game. I keep putting off and putting off making this video because I don't even want to look at this footage. Come on, die, just die, just fucking die, just, ah! Okay, gotta build up momentum on the spring, gotta spring up higher and higher. Come on, get over that wall, get over that wall. Your mother! And all the way back to the start I go. Yes, found the checkpoint, all right. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm at the checkpoint. This is when the game really started showing its true colors. You have to jump up these platforms while wind physics are moving you around and helicopters are throwing projectiles and charging at you. This part of the game was bullshit with a capital everything. I swear it would be easier to rebuild an engine with soccer boppers on your hands. Remember them things? And I dated myself again. Game over, but luckily you have continues, but they start you at the beginning of the stage, which was hard enough. I felt like I accomplished the impossible just getting to the checkpoint. And those damn helicopters, man, get the fuck out of here. Damn it! Look, it's one thing to have wind physics moving you around. It's another thing to have flying enemies that throw projectiles, but to have both of this at the same time? I think at some point they just forgot it was supposed to be a kid's game and just decided to make it bullshit difficult. I must have played this level over and over again, and I never could get past this one spot with the two helicopters at the top. So you know what? Just to spite this game, we're putting in cheat codes. Here we go, invincibility and skip to the next level. Fuck you, game. Now we're in a clock tower, Still trying to go upwards, but now we don't have that stupid wind anymore. My main problem now is I keep getting on these slippery platforms that keep making me fall down. I must have fell off this damn platform about 10 times. Oh look, it's the Pendulum of Doom. What's the Pendulum of Doom doing here? Anyway, this boss is hard even with the cheats because you still have knockback even though you're invincible and you can fall down and still die. And then you have the fourth level, which is the epitome of bullcrap because of the monkey. These 
Ah, oh, God forsaken monkeys. They throw apples at your ass and then knock you off the platform. They kept knocking me on this inner tube down here and you have to jump from the far right corner of the inner tube to get on the platform because it's just far enough away to be a problem. Fucking monkeys, fucking shit flinging bastards. You want to touch my monkey? Yeah, I want to punch it in the fucking face. This game makes me want to punch animals. And finally, we have World 5, which is where I gave up. Ooh, let me tell you about the guy with the rocket launcher. He flies all around throwing rockets at you. The rockets are super fast and you would swear they are guided. This one right here is in the perfect spot to knock you back and make you fall down. And unless you've cooked up some kind of strategy, he'll do it every time. I have actually run through all my lives because of this one enemy alone. And if you do survive him, he starts flying all around throwing more rockets at you. And there's another one behind him. This part of this stupid ass piece of shit game is so fucked. Go, go, gadget, fuck yourself. Wait, wait a minute, what's going on? I'm still alive down here, what the fuck? Is it because I'm invincible? I've been dying all these other times, why didn't I die this time? I'm walking under the stage. Oh, I apparently found a bonus stage down here. Uh, I have the feeling I'm not supposed to be down here yet. The Rocket Man killed me so hard I went into purgatory. Rocket Man, no one fucking likes you. Die alone. I didn't think I'd find something I hated more than the poles in the Grinch, but this is it. And that's when I shut the game off and I will never ever play that again. Inspector Gadget Operation Mad Cactus on the Game Boy Color. Okay, elephant in the room. What is an Ubi key? Is that some Ubisoft DRM? Close. Well, basically Ubisoft would hide a key somewhere in the game. And if you found it, the game would save the fact that you found it. And if you just happen to have another friend with a Game Boy Color that has this game and has also found this key, you can transfer the the keys via the infrared thing on a Game Boy Color, and somehow that unlocks a secret level. Is that not the most convoluted bullshit you ever heard in your damn life? So here's the deal. There's an evil cactus company owned by Mad that's making all these crazy cactus monsters, and Gadget is sent to the Cactus Factory to stop them on an island called Owu Iwu. Are you sure they don't make fursuits in Owu Iwu? This is another one of those games that gives you a hundred freaking tutorials to go through. The exit arrow shows you the way out. You don't say. And I'm not not joking about the tutorials neither watch this see there's one tutorial keep watching keep watching I did not edit that. After the tutorial, there's a tutorial. I fucking hate tutorials. So this one actually lets you play as Penny or Brain if you want to. Penny can hack computers and swim, and Brain can double jump. Penny and Brain can only take two hits, though, and Gadget can take multiple ones. Any character can collect ammo for the gadgets. The Gadget Copter is pretty nice because it's fast, but that does also mean you can accidentally bump into enemies, but that's more of a you problem, not the game. In some stages, you need to find a marked area on the map to drop a bomb at, and then you can head to the exit. I don't have much to say about this game, honestly. It's not that bad. The levels can be a little confusing at times because everything kind of looks the same, but that's why they gave you the exit arrows, I guess. But I do have a couple minor gripes. The computer hacking. It's pipe dream, basically. If you played Bioshock, you've played this. It just feels like a tedious waste of time. I don't hate it, I just don't care for it. Then there's a stage where you have to get to the top real fast because there's insta-kill water rising up to insta-kill you. And it rises really fast, so you need to be quick about where you're going or have a good memory of the stage to get to the top fast enough. Again, it's not pissing me off, it's just a frustrating level is all. I don't know, I guess I feel like I should go easy on this game because for one thing, it's a Game Boy game and it's the first gadget game so far that doesn't make me dry heave. Seriously, compared to the Super Nintendo game, this is a fucking capasso. However, this level had the one instance where a tutorial killed me. I picked up a weapon I'd never got before. The tutorial popped up and it canceled my jump. That is the first time a tutorial has ever killed me in a game. Tutorials. Inspector Gadget Advance Mission on the Take a Fucking Guess Advance. At least in this one, you get the tutorial at the beginning beginning of the game and then they leave you alone.
Froggy went a courting and he did ride a c- 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 Campbell. Why is it Froggy went a courting? Froggy with fries draws hentai of your mom. Oh shit. Oh god. I gotta make fun of my friends sometimes. Guys, do you know what it means when a game has a smell? This smells like GBA. We have ugly compressed JPEG sprites, stupid music, a franchise license. If it was only isometric, it would complete the quartet of shit that is Game Boy Advance games. I can't be mad at this one. It makes me happy. It makes me laugh. Anyway, this game is a lot like the Game Boy Color game. In fact, it's made by the same people. Only this time they got rid of the exit arrows. So these maps feel extremely convoluted. And you are left to your own devices to figure out where the hell you're supposed to go. The perspective doesn't make sense on some of these sprites neither. I don't know if something's in the background or in the foreground. I will say this is definitely worse than the Game Boy Color game. Because I just, I can't figure out where I'm supposed to go. I never know if I'm making progress or backtracking. It would help if everything didn't all look the same. What is this supposed to be? A bank vault full of money and gold or a refrigerator full of food? Either way, it's very hilarious that that's something you pick up in the game. An entire bank vault refrigerator. What sealed the deal for me, though, is that I got the gadget coat and I started going up and up and up and I just steadily went up and up and up. I thought I was going to hit the ceiling here, but I went through the platform. You see, this game doesn't make any sense perspective-wise. And then I found this checkpoint here, and I jumped, and then I realized I was going down and down and down and down and down. Oh, fuck. And then landed in my starting position. Nah, bro, I'm good. PlayStation, yeah, come on, man. I believe in you, holy PlayStation. Oh, that is such a blue ball. Fucking great value gadget theme. And what is this music? Fucking chill gadget tunes to study to. Uh, is Mad Cat okay over there? Has he got lockjaw? Oh no, Dr. Claw stole the Chaos Emeralds. All right, time to see what this game's all about. Don't disappoint me, PlayStation. D excuse me? P pardon moi? Partial dinnerware? It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. Why is it a 2D puzzle game? They have all the power of the PlayStation 1, and this is what they make? I'm pretty sure I've even seen a puzzle game exactly like this. It's one of those puzzle games where you have to match three of the thing to clear the thing. I'm not even gonna lie. I suck at this shit. I can't even tell you if these are well-made puzzles or not, because I legitimately am not good enough at these kind of games to tell you that. Okay, yellow one's clear. I just blocked myself out of that gate. Well, fuck the gate. Let's do the red ones. Let's do the red ones. Okay, get this guy. Push this fu- Oh, for fuck's sake. At this point, I'm going to start putting triangles in a square hole. This game is not fun to play. In fact, let's talk about the word play. Play means you are engaged in an amusing activity. Well, this is not amusing. I am not engaged, and it's not much of an activity. This does not feel like play. It feels like the opposite of play. And what's the opposite of play kids work this feels like work to play this game feels like a job wait playing games kind of is my job yeah because i got laid off from my job and not a penny to my name i need to bring back the theme song how many games have we got left oh just two more oh thank god i was getting sick of this video you know i have to turn my ac off to make these videos i sweat my 260 pound dump truck of an ass off i know i look slim for a coyote i hide the fat folds in my hat now, Europe actually got two Inspector Gadget games that we didn't get in the US. Mad Robots Invasion and Gadget and the Gadgetinis. Both of them on PS2. Let's look at Mad Robots Invasion first. I can't help but wonder if the gadget coat was somebody's sexual awakening. Go, go, Gadget Deviant Art. Look, Brain, the Statue of Liberty. Oh, these graphics. Look at the graphics, they're awesome. <laughs> That's a walk cycle. The Statue of Liberty must be on the edge of the earth. Ah! Well, they're dead. Also, Brain has a penis for a tail. Oh, I thought.
thought the audio glitched. That was supposed to be the boat. Well, I wonder who could be playing tennis around here. Jeez, I sound more like Gadget than he does, and I'm an inbred hick. And now, let's go. I must save Penny and Brain. You know how sometimes your voice will sound like you're reading something? That's Gadget right now. We got a two and a half D platformer this time around. Is this one going to be any good? No! It's okay. It's decent enough, but it's not going to blow you away or anything. Honestly, the best thing about it is the gadget hammer because you walk up to people and you give them a fucking brain hemorrhage. Go, go, gadget hammer! Gadget, you fucking murdered that man in cold blood. Maybe he was telling him to say no to drugs. You'll go to hell and you'll die. Your gadgets are items you'll pick up as you need them. Work those legs, gadget inspector. Go, 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 gadget legs! Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah! Buy my gadgets! Buy your gadgets? What does that mean? Are they for sale? Might as well say buy your toys and merchandise. How do I keep finding this stuff? This is another game I really don't feel good making fun of because when it's fun, it's fun. But when it's bullshit, it's really fucking bullshit. Like in this level where you're having to jump on conveyor belts and dodge boxes at the same time. <laughs> And here's where I put on my waders because the bullshit gets real thick right here. Let me slow that down. There's a platform high up I need to jump on, but this little piece of ceiling is just right to be wrong. And when I jump over there, I hit that ceiling and it knocks me down. This happened more than a few times too. It was pretty aggravating. Even when I did jump over it, the model acted like it didn't know what to do. It kind of bobbed me around for some reason. The bosses are bullshit. They're pitiful and bullshit. This one throws rockets at you and the way you hurt this boss is by trying to make the rockets hit the spot he's standing in. And the only way to do that is to stand as close to him as possible. For one thing, he keeps moving and another thing, the rockets fall down really fast so you don't have time to react. It's a good thing you have a long life bar because you're going to take a lot of hits. The London level is the one that finally made me rage quit though. There's this part where you're running on the road and there's cars coming at you and you don't see or hear the cars until they're already a flies pecker size length towards you. And again, you have no time to react. There seems to be a pattern here somehow. And then there's these rocks you gotta jump on that they made slippery for some reason? And then there's the murder of crows that try to murder you. What would be someone's reaction to seeing somebody beat the shit out of crows with a hammer? Remember that scene in We're Back where the bad guy is getting stalked by the crows and then the one crow comes down and the rest of them come down and then they cover him up and they fucking eat the guy alive? You remember that scene? That was cool. And then there's this asshole. And then I stop saying, and then. This boss drops bombs on the ground and the only way to hurt him is to let him get hurt by his own bombs. But there's no real good way of doing that. They expect you to jump over him so he'll stop for a moment, I guess. But the thing is, you have to kind of learn how long the bombs take to blow up and try to time your jumping over him just right to where when he starts running at you again, a bomb will blow up on him. But damned if I can make that happen. It even seems like when I jump over a bomb that's exploded, I still take damage. And it's just so bad. It's so fucking bad. It's bad. It's just fucking tuggery. Oh. Oh. I hate it. And I have run out of steam for this video. I can't be mad. I can't be sad. I can't be nothing but just aggravated that I'm still making this video. A at this point, I just want to get it over with. So let's look at this one last game and then move on with our lives. <sighs> this is Gadget and the Gadgetinis for PlayStation 2. God, I don't even care anymore. This looks amazing! What the fuck? Whoa, dude, check that out! Did they actually try and give a shit? They tried! They tried! Let me get a drink right quick. 
I do not have enough Java Monster for this. Could this be it after all this garbage, the diamond in the rough that we didn't get in the US? Well, let's have a look. So Gadget and the Gadgetinis was apparently a TV show, a spinoff from 2002 that we didn't get in the US. Now Gadget works for a secret agency and he has new sidekicks that replaced Brain because Brain ran away from home? You literal piece of dog shit. And this is the video game for it. Now granted, the graphics don't look all that special. It's typical cheap PS2 game, but I'm willing to look past that because there's a lot this game does right. First, you get these cheap cutscenes with this French guy, which I guess replaced Chief Quimby. Spreading a gas throughout Las Vegas that makes people go crazy. That's not a gas, that's 5G. So let me start up with- Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Is- is he- is he doing the- No, no, it's 2002. It wasn't even invented yet. Well, that's gonna be an emote on the Discord server. Get the gadget communicator! Why are you talking like a British person, Gadget? All throughout your mission, whenever a new dilemma arises... Shit, talk about British. Penny is farting tea and crumpets over here. So the great thing about this game is you already have all your gadgets and you can use them all at any time. And you know what? That's all I asked for. Punching feels really satisfying in this game because his gadget arms shoot out really far and you can reach somebody from way down yonder. And if you collect enough of these boxing glove coins, you can upgrade the punch and make it even better. There's something kind of weird with his wall. He kind of floats in place for a half second, then starts the walk animation. It's funny. Use the jump button while moving with the left analogistic. <laughs> the what? The analogistic? Hey, hey, British folk, y'all don't really call it that, do you? Boy, I'll have a pull on me analogistic. You want, mate? I'm so glad I played this game. Let's just unpack everything here. We've got Pogging Gadget, we've got British Gadget, we've got Analogistic, and we've got solid mechanics and controls like this game was actually made by people who gave a fuck. The only thing that would make this the ultimate game is if I could spam voice clips. <laughs> Well, that tears it. I love this game. But for real, what do I like about this game? Well, the level design is really nice for one thing. They keep throwing new stuff at you every level, which is what you want in a game. You don't want the same old shit on every damn level. You need variety, and this game has it, plus a lot of gadgets to maneuver through it with. You've got the gadget copter, you've got magnetic shoes, you've got telescoping arms and legs, an umbrella to glide with, and the gadget coat, which reflects projectiles back towards the enemy. There's many games where you play as the gadgetine themselves and one has a laser and one has a rocket launcher. You use them to kill all the enemies in the arena. I do feel like these sections kind of get in the way of my fun playing as Gadget, but I don't mind it enough to say I hate it. That said, would I say it's a good game? Well, compared to the other shit we played today, this is mashed potatoes and pussy and they both go good with gravy. Try it. And if your PC can handle PS2 emulation, I say go get it. It is the one and only good Inspector Gadget gadget game. And if I had to end on a high note, this is it. And that is all the Inspector Gadget games that I'm going to review. Get out of here. I have slaved over this video for so long. It is now 12 p.m. and I'm going to bed. Tell fuck it, I'll go to sleep right here. Did, did I ever mention Dixie? I, I never mentioned Dixie, not once. Here she is. I wonder if anybody ever took up on the offer about drawing my Sona as a girl. That'd be funny.